everyone and welcome back to Coffee and Crime, the true crime podcast where this month we're looking at true crimes that inspired some of the most loved and famous horror movies ever made. One movie which we'll be talking about today just came back into popularity not too long ago. When it was first released it wasn't that popular due to the marketing being geared toward men but the plot being more interesting and suitable for women. After years of it being in the world it became a cult classic. Of course, I'm talking about Jennifer's body. It is known that at least part of the inspiration for the movie was based off of a brutal murder of a 15-year-old girl. So let us compare them today. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, curl up on the couch, and get ready for some true crime. Welcome to another episode of Coffee and Crime, and my lovely guest star is back this week. Hey, it's Gogo Merceau, Mercy Grimm's girlfriend. So, this is an episode of Partners in Crime, and this week we are talking about the true crime behind Jennifer's Body, the 2009 movie. It's a horror Wait, comedy. it was in 2009? Because I remember watching the trailers for that. It was, what? 2009. It was a 2009 horror comedy. When did you watch the trailers? I don't even remember. I yeah. feel like I feel like it wasn't that long ago. No, no, no. But okay. I remember when it... Okay. The reason why you might think it's not that long ago is because um, when it came out, like no one gave a shit about it. Like it was not very popular or very like well received at all. And then I don't know, maybe like. Four or five years after it came out, like, people really started to, like, care about it and respect it. So okay. that's when it became, like, super popular. So, like, the um, mid-2010s, it became popular. Okay. That's why you might think it's more recent. I believe it's called the mid, like, the teens. Whatever. But, yeah, that's the that's the whole thing. That's why it's, it, it, it's, it's not, um, it's, it's. Kind of labeled as a cult classic now, even though it's a newer movie. Usually cult classics are things from, like, the 80s and the 90s, but it became, like, everyone's, like, favorite, more modern classic horror movie. So we'll start with the actual murder. Um, It was uh, Lise Marie Paler, and she was born April 24th, 1980, so this was actually more recent. Uh, murder. Um, she lived in. Te- um, she was born in Templeton, California, but she grew up in Aro Grande, California, and she was supposedly like your average nice teenage girl. She liked sports, and she was active in theater, and she sang in choir, and she wanted to be an actress. Okay, so who does she represent in the movie? Because for some reason, it for me, she represents Jennifer. The really? Main character. Okay, we'll get to that. Okay, we'll get to that after we explain the murder. But she represents Jennifer. So, um, like I said, she's your average nice girl on the outside, but she actually had a lot of drug and alcohol problems, and she was only, like, a, a, a teen at this time. Um, she seemed average, but she would go regularly sneak out with boys and go smoke weed and uh, drink That alcohol. just sounds like a good time. Uh, I mean, um, she did go to rehab for it at one point. That also sounds like a good time. <laughs> That's where she met one of the three boys. Um, so on the night of July 22nd, 1995, so that was like literally a year before I was born. Um, (laughs) I mean, pretty much, because I I was, I'm born in July, so. I'm a baby. (laughs) Um, she was, um, she was 15 years old at the time. Uh, she would sneak out of the house, uh, with three boys, and she did not know at the time she was following them to her death. Um, the three boys, uh, Jacob Delishmet, Joseph Fiorella, and Royce Casey, were intent on killing her for a satanic ritual, which they had been planning for months. I love a good satanic ritual. I mean, they're cool, but, you know, when you have to murder a person. Hey, in my cult, we always sacrifice the newest member. We did it to you. Okay. 
So um, Casey actually um, would later um, claim that he found this ritual because uh, he wanted to get better at playing guitar, so he looked it up. And really? it supposedly gave you powerful abilities to become better at what you did because the boys were actually in a band, so they wanted You're to You're telling sing. me these three boys killed a girl so they could be quote-unquote rock stars? Yeah. That's so yeah, fucking yeah, stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Elise trusted them. She she hung out with them before, you know. Um, she grew up with a couple of them. Like, so um, sneaking out with boys and doing satanic rituals where I don't get killed sounds like amazing time. I would still do it to this day. <laughs> but, like, just don't murder me. Like I said, she hung out with them and she knew them as being members of a local band called Hatred. That's such a lame name. I know. I know. I don't I know. like them. But wait till you hear the name of the band in the movie. It's even more dumber. She actually met um, one of the boys, Delishment, at a rehab center uh, where they were both um, undergoing treatment for their drug and alcohol abuse. Woo! <laughs> and then she also... Sounds like a part egg. <laughs> she also attended the same school as Fiorella. Um, like I said, there were no clear signs that she was in any danger. She trusted them. She knew them. She'd smoked and drank with them before. So it was like... See, that's what everyone an thinks. Average, like, time. Well, on that fateful night, um, Paler snuck out to go into the woods to partake in drugs and alcohol with the members of the band, uh, and uh, she had no idea that this would be the last time she would leave her house a lot. When they were out of sight of all the roads and other houses, the boys didn't waste any time in uh, their uh, getting their heinous act started. Um, Delishma took, um, took off his belt and coiled it around her throat, uh, and Casey forced her down as Freyla pulled out a hunting knife and plunged it into her neck. So all three of them actually took turns stabbing her um, while she begged for her life. They actually stabbed her a total of 12 times, and all of them were superficial or non-fatal wounds. So she was just slowly bleeding So they got out. four stabs each if I there's guess. 12 and you're doing it evenly. Because, again, if you... All would get a chance to do it evenly, which I believe it. You know, stabbing everyone in equal amount. Uh, well, she um, bled out slowly as um, the boys waited for her to die. See, I don't want instant death. I don't like slow torture. Yeah. Unless it's, it's for other reasons. It, it was very, very... It, it took her a while to die, too. So, mm. um, Once they had confirmed she was dead, they desecrated her body. So, mm. they committed an acts of necrophilia and they actually did it more than once because it took them police authorities eight months to find her body she was reported missing but the area that she was in was so secluded and so non-used that they had no idea to search there but the only reason that um she's actually ever found was because uh one of the boys admitted to the crimes see that's just dumb Okay, so it was, I'm sorry. That's it was like, why it was Casey. And you could have gotten away with it. He 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 did it because um, he renounced the satanic faith that he was following um, because um, he had become a Christian. See, that's not fun either. Like, really, you went from like a eaten worshiper to a Christian. Like, that's just not fun. Uh, so. Because he switched fates, um, it prompted him to confess his sins, okay. and he admitted Dumb. to the authorities what had happened. He also claimed to be afraid for his own life at the time, because the other boys um, had said that there would be others that they would kill, not just okay. Elise. Here's my thing. The downfall of this is he's a Christian. That's not how that should work. Like, no. This is the biggest problem I see so far with this story. Is that he's a Christian? Well, he wasn't before. He was a Satanist. Oh no, no, no! I understand that. I'm saying, like, between all of the murder and satanic rituals, the worst thing that's happened so far is someone converge to Christianity. So, Casey revealed that the band had actually been plotting her murder for months prior to committing it. They I'm more of a murder of passion kind of girl. They'd even attempted it once before. 
so like before this night that they committed they actually got um another boy involved but it ended up failing because they tried to convince him to do the killing and um they convinced him to stab they tried to convince him to stab elise but he froze like a deer in headlights kind of freeze and he couldn't do it and then elise thought you can't limp out on this kind of stuff no elise the worst part was elise saw him with a knife and she just thought it was a prank So when I read that, at that moment, I was like, what do you mean she wasn't suspicious about going into the woods with these three boys that had pranked her with a hunting knife before? Why why would you not be suspicious? Because bitches be crazy. Maybe she just wanted free weed? I don't know. I mean, doesn't everyone? (laughs) Casey went on, he told the police the band would actually just casually sit around and listen to death metal music while they talked about how they wanted to sacrifice Elise to Satan. As if it was a normal conversation to have, just your everyday average thing. Is it not a normal conversation to have? Most people know. For most people know. I mean, I've talked about murder in front of my parents. No, 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 okay, that's just, (laughs) okay, no, there's like a point where it's like, um, I'm sure you've all said, oh, I want to kill this person. I hate this person kind of thing, but there's a point where it becomes more of a reality where you actually try to attempt to do it. Oh, no. I know my plan. Me and my family, we know our plan. <laughs> uh, so, he told them that um, they would specifically listen to songs by the band Slayer, and he would later go on to blame the band for the song lyrics that they wrote, making the um, boys think about murder and death. Have you ever listened to Slayer music? I have not. Um, I, I'm not a fan, but I have. Like, I like, I like some death metal music, but I don't like, um, too much. I'm okay with screamo kind of music like that, but, like, I'm more of a fan of just regular metal music. But I've listened to a couple Slayer songs. I just don't like metal. Um, and the, like, the lyrics are extremely su- suggestive of killing because they literally have like um, rape and murder and all of those other things in their lyrics so I mean they tried to make a valid point about it but obviously no one was buying it (laughs) yeah to say you're that influenced by music people try and blame songs for a lot of things you really you really can't in the end you chose to do it yeah (laughs) you didn't you can't say Oh, the song jumped out of the um, radio and did it for me. That's, that's no. If you say that, you're just dumb. <laughs> or crazy. Yeah, that too. Uh, so, uh, Casey explained they chose Elise specifically because she had blue eyes and blonde hair. So, uh, innocent. Yeah, innocent. She was a virgin. Uh, oh, so- and they figured she'd be a perfect sacrifice to Satan. I mean, Satan does love his blondes. And virgins. And virgins. Yeah. It's kind of a whole Satan thing right there. Um, after, uh, after they had killed her, Casey had been struggling with his choices, and he kept a journal about it. That's... <laughs> Not only did he convert to Christianity, which was dumb, he wrote it in his diary? <laughs> journal. <laughs> no, that's a diary. <laughs> No, that's, oh, no. Like, you're just gonna get caught. Like, you have to be smart about murder. Jeez. He wrote about um, how serial murders were what Satan would want to satisfy him. If Satan were to ever come to our world, they would have to murder people to satisfy Satan. Because they were, they wanted Satan to come here. At, they, 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 they worshipped him. Mm-hmm. So they thought serial murders are the only way to, to, to Satan. Satan to like please him. Uh, after Casey had admitted to the murder, the other two boys were arrested, and um, neither of them denied what had happened. They both also said they were guilty. Um, Flora and Delishmit actually started describing in detail their fascination with Satan. Mm-hmm. Um, Flora um, talked about them and about his knowledge of the occult. Um, at first, it was just casual conversations with the band members, but um, of it was course, like, well, it was like like I said, where they smoked weed and listened to death metal. 
That's what you do. You just casually talk about the occult. I mean, I do it all the time. Most people have casual conversations about, like, things that fascinate them. Yeah. Like, I'm literally sitting here talking to you about murder. Yeah, but that's, that's fascinating me. For us. And that's normal. That's my normal conversation. I can talk about crime and it's just it's a fascination to me. But would I ever go out and actually murder someone? No. Probably that's fucking not. absurd. Um Flora actually like Florella actually went on to suggest sacrifice to them as if it were nothing while they were having these conversations. Like, let's do sacrifice or whatever. And that'd be fun. They at the time they at that time when they were discussing it, they didn't know they'd actually go through with it though. So all three of them So they're both yeah. They pled guilty and they were sentenced to twenty five years to life in prison. Um and Elisa's parents would actually go on to try and sue the band Slayer in nineteen ninety six. They would try to sue them. It's for the music. Not you, their can't, fault. you can't do it. Um none of none of the judges who they brought the case to would accept it. No one I would wouldn't give it, it the light of day. That's just no, stupid. No, people, people try and do that kind of shit all the time where they try and, like, say this song made someone do something, so I want a, to be, re, to be, um, to get restitution for it. I want to be reimbursed for it. It's not going to work. No. no it didn't work. So all the judges, every, everyone they took the case to, they just threw it away and said it was a worthless yeah. case. After serving a few years in prison, Delishma would, um, actually later recant his statement about Slayer's music and then say it was Joseph Perella who was the one who was convincing them to do things. He would say in an interview, the music is destructive. That's not why Elise was murdered. She was murdered because Joe Perella was obsessed with her and obsessed with killing her. Here's uh, my thing. Instead of blaming it on music, why don't you just blame it on Satan? Said he whispered in your ear, you can claim you're crazy and get a nicer sentence. You know, that's, that's what a, I would That's a pretty good idea. That's what I would have done. I'm just saying. Pretty, you could have been like, I'm, you could have just blamed it on schizophrenia or something. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Frella denied Delishmith's claims and stuck with the idea that it was the fault of the music for getting stuck in his head. But Frella would actually change his tune in yet another interview saying that it wasn't the music at all. And uh, he would insist that the murder was not a sacrifice. After all the years of saying that it was, he said no. But sacrifice or not, the influence of music or not, they murdered someone. Yeah. Nothing they say is going to change this at that point. They, yeah. they killed someone. They can't take back what they did. They, no matter who they blame for it, they're the ones who did it. Yes. So th- that, that was the story of at least Taylor's murder. That's, as of right now, that's up to date with what's been happening with it. Okay. Like, some of those interviews are more recent than others. Like, early 2000s, I believe. Because um, it was when they, have ser- when they had served a few years in prison, actually a couple, one of them tried to um, get a parole, parole hearing, but the mm-hmm. parents, Elise's parents refused. Well, yeah. To even, they, they, they um, put their foot down to that. They said, hell no. Yeah, they wouldn't humor it. No. So that that was Elise Taylor. Mm-hmm. I'm sure now you want to know about the movie. So I've never seen the movie. Let's preface this. I know that a demon possesses someone and makes her kill men. Which, you know, I, I fuck with that idea. Like, it's great. Yeah. Let's just kill men. <laughs> okay. So, like I was talking about before. Oh, by the way, spoilers for Jennifer's body if you you haven't seen it yet. We're just going to talk about the movie for the rest of this podcast. So spoilers for the movie. Don't know why you're here if you haven't seen it yet. But um, in the movie, um, Jennifer's Body, like I said, it's a 2009 horror comedy. The main character, Jennifer, is played by Megan Fox. Hell yeah. Megan Fox would actually later go on to say in interviews that this role was one of her favorites was because of the themes of the movie. Killing most men most and being well, hot. Yeah. Well, those are two of my favorite things. Well, the plot of the movie is actually more about like toxicity and friendship and um misogyny and a lot of other things. That's yes. Yeah. So that's why this was one of her favorite roles. And and most of the main cast really enjoyed the concept of the movie. Um the the director is actually female. So, so. putting the end to the patriarchy, man. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
in the movie, the main character, Jennifer, um, she she would actually um, perish in a very similar way to Elise Taylor. And uh, it, it wouldn't be the exact same way that she died, but she died for the exact same reason, a sacrifice for Satan, to make a band get better at playing guitar. So the movie starts out with the main character, Anita. Her nickname is Needy. Mm-hmm. Um, she's in pr- a prison for violent people. And uh, she's a teenager, by the way. She, she's a teenager. Okay, and this is played <laughs> by, what, Amanda Seyfried? Yeah, the other main lead. Okay. Yes. And uh, she takes the viewers on a flashback to the events of the movie that led her to this point. Okay. And to the person she used to be okay. before she ended up in this prison. So, one night, Jennifer and her best friend, Anita, so like I said, Needy, are at a bar to hear a band play, because Jennifer likes the band. And while they're there at the bar, a strange fire, like, engulfs the bar. Like, the whole place is set on fire, and a lot of the people are killed. They don't escape. Um, but um, the band actually helps Jennifer escape, mm-hmm. and Needy gets out herself. And after the fire, and in shock from the fire, Jennifer decides to leave with the band in their creepy pedo van, and they take her into the woods. Once again, sounds like a good time. <laughs> I mean, she thought it was going to be a good time, <laughs> apparently, because, you know, she she had the hots for the leader of the band, I think. Oh, by the way, the band's name is Low Shoulder. That's even worse. I know, right? Oh, my God. I know. I told you you thought the band name would be worse. At least Hatred has something to it. Yeah, it's better than you, Low you can, Shoulder. You get the concept of the name, because this band is, like, the same type of band as Hatred, like, metal yeah. music, like heavy music so um jennifer uh goes to needy's house that later that night and she's not looking so hot she her face has uh some red on it you know some presumably blood yeah she looks sickly but she's got this creepy ass smile on her face and needy turns around because she actually that's one of the jump scares she sneaks up behind her while she's in the kitchen and um, Jennifer smiles at her, and Needy's like, oh, are you okay? Because that whole thing that happened. She, Needy actually saw Jennifer get in the van with the band. Yeah. But she couldn't do anything about it. She just called her boyfriend Chip and told her about it. And Jennifer just presumes to vomit all over the floor. And the vomit is, like, this nasty black, like, I think of, like, tar kind of vomit. And it moves. Yeah. And it's, like, all these pointy spikes, and it, like, moves all over the kitchen floor. And yeah, but that's normal. And then Jennifer just leaves Needy's house. That's normal. That happens to me every time I go out drinking. <laughs> so, the next morning, they go to school. Jennifer seems fine uh, and dismisses any concerns that her friend has from the night before. And everyone is devastated about the fire. They're talking about the fire the band actually comes to the school because like they're cool because they help people from the fire or whatever and um jennifer is actually busy she's not um at this little assembly they're having with the band to thank them she's out in the woods with the um football team captain seducing him so she's making out with the captain of the football team in the woods have you ever seen I don't know if it was in any of the trailers, but there's, um, the scene looks like this. I'm going to paint you a picture. So they're in the woods. He's against a tree. They're making out. She's in front of him. Mm -hmm. She pulls back and he notices that a lot of the woodland creatures have surrounded them. Like all of the animals in the woods. So you're telling me she's a (laughs) demon Snow White. I mean, I think they just knew that they were going to get some food. (laughs) Ooh. That's the whole concept. So like they're I all they're all dead staring them. And then he um he's confused. And then this part happens um where they do a like a zoom in on her face and then her mouth just opens up and like her chick cheeks are are split and like it's this huge teeth and like, huge di- picture demon face. And then she disembowels. Why him. am I thinking of like the creature from Stranger Things? The Demogorgon, just like it's kind of, it's kind of like that, but it's not like a flowering kind of thing. It's yeah. just like um, there's okay, there's like 
there's a legend in I believe it's Japan of um this this woman um who got um her uh, face slit by a katana I think mm-hmm. it was and she has these um cuts or like or you can think of Jeff the Killer you I'm know the creepy why pasta. am I thinking of the Joker because he has that creepy looking smile but yeah. it, it's not like her his cheeks are extended yeah but okay better than her think Jeff the Killer from a creepy pasta. Okay. It's like that. Like, he cut his, he cut his cheeks open. Her cheeks are cut open when she opens her mouth to reveal, like, this huge set of sh- sharp, pointy, like, demonic shark-like teeth. And she disembowels him, presumably, Ooh. to eat him. That was fun. While this is happening, like I told you, the band is at the school making an appearance, so no one really knows what's going on Yeah, outside. So... The movie actually flashes to a month later. We're in Jennifer's bedroom, and she's putting makeup on her face, mm-hmm. and she's not looking very well. Yeah. It's, it is presumed that she hasn't eaten in a while. Yeah. We notice that her face is extremely pale. She looks frail. She's, she's Here's weak. Here's the thing. Megan Fox could never look not good. I'm going to start there. I mean, they tried. They she tried. Has, she has this, like, hollowed, like, pale, like, malnourished kind of look. And it's 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 befitting, and it it serves the purpose of alluding to yeah. the fact that she gets weak if she doesn't eat. Yeah. So she decides to go on a date, a quote unquote date, and it's with this. Um, oh, she's about to really eat, you know. It's with this emo kid at school. His name's Colin. He's actually not a bad guy. I love he's, he's good just emo he's just boy. an emo boy, and he, she kills him, mm-hmm. and she eats him. Obviously, it's actually a really brutal part of the movie. And while Needy is having sex with her boyfriend, Chip, um, she actually, uh, it's this really weird um, scene that she sees um, Jennifer, like, with a, it's like a visiony type thing. Okay. Jennifer with a dead body, and she's, like, covered in blood and stuff. And it frightens her, and she runs away, and she actually almost trips over Jennifer herself, because they're in the same vicinity as each other. And uh, Jennifer's covered in blood. Ooh. For realsies. So, at home, after all of this transpires, Jennifer explains to Needy what had happened to her in the woods. Okay. So, this is where we get that connection between the actual murder we talked about and Jennifer's murder. So, Jennifer was murdered by a band, sacrificed to Satan so that they could become more powerful and, like, better at guitar and whatever. Um, so Jennifer, stupid. Jennifer didn't actually die. Okay. Te- technically. She technically didn't actually die. So what happened was she was permanently possessed by a demon because she wasn't a virgin. Oh. Yeah. So when she got in the van with them at the beginning of the movie after That's the That's why you have to ask first. She, they did. She lied to them. Oh. And told them. She's like, yeah, I'm a virgin because she wants to get with them. Yeah. But she's not a virgin. So... They kill her. They 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 brutally stab her. Like there's a whole flashback where she's ex- explaining it to her friend what had happened to her. It was very awful. It was like what happened to Elise, and they just left her for dead. Just like yeah, they, the boys left Elise. Um, they needed a virgin for the ritual to work correctly. So the ritual technically worked for them. Yeah, like they got what they wanted out of it. But because she wasn't a virgin on her part. She became the so demon. they're blaming the girl in this. In, in that in that sense, not 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 technically, not technically because it was the guy's the fault. The demons for doing are what they blaming did. the girl because she's not a virgin. Well, that's the ritual. The ritual states that you I have know, to sacrifice. But still. It's not really blaming the girl because they did choose to do the sacrifice, so it's not her fault. It's just the repercussions of the ritual itself. Okay. So, Jennifer also explains to Needy that she needs to feed to stay healthy. So, like, when we saw her put on the makeup in an earlier scene, she hadn't fed in a while. That's yeah. why she killed the emo kid. And if she feeds, she be she feels powerful. She can't feel pain, and she can heal really fast. Things like vampire shit, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, this next scene is actually reminiscent of Twilight. I would totally let Megan Fox bite me. This, I'm just saying. This last, I mean, wouldn't anyone? She's so Megan Fox. You know? So, the next day, 
need to goes like all Twilight vampire research style. Like, did you did you watch the first Twilight movie? Uh, we didn't finish it, but I know what you're talking about. So like the part when Bella goes and does research on Edward, and it's like this all this like yeah. articles on the internet and like articles and books and like um zoom ins on like um so vampire words. cold one those that thing that kind of Twilight shit happens in this movie okay. where um Needy's doing research and it's like demon ritual satanic succubus kind of, <laughs> it's like basically like the key words kind of thing yeah and um she finds out that jennifer is a type of succubus that must feed on flesh and she can only be killed when she's weak okay so um needy is really nervous because there's a dance coming up and she's sure that jennifer is going to be there to feed so she warns her boyfriend chip about jennifer and tells him her discoveries, and he just obviously does not believe her, because that's crazy. He's probably like, they be crazy. Yeah, but like, be, yeah, you no. know. But, uh, but like, who in their right mind, it's just like, no one would have ever believed Bella unless they had actual proof. I Twilight. believe in the weirdness of the I mean, world. your average person would not. So, he doesn't believe her. So she breaks up with him to protect him from Jennifer so that he won't be anywhere near her because Jennifer's usually with her because they're best friends. Yeah. So she wants to protect him. So Chip, a now newly single guy, decides to attend the dance anyway. Oh. But before he can go, you know, he's, like, all dressed up in his dance, like, his tux, his, like, his best outfit. Everyone's in, like, like dance attire. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer intercepts him before he goes to the dance. And she takes him to an abandoned pool house. Hmm. Yeah, so, you know, they're, they're all alone. And she's obviously intent on feeding on him. And yeah. uh, she begins to eat him. And Needy shows up to try and save Chip, to try and stop her. And um, Chip ends up in, he's badly injured at this point. Yeah. Like, like she's bitten into him. And um, he stabs her with, like, um, one of those, like, pool cleany stick things. Like, you know, like, you put it in the yeah. pool. And uh, she pulls it out of her stomach. He stabs her through her stomach. She just casually pulls it out. It heals. And um, she escapes as Chip dies. Oh. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean. But he chose to go with her to the pool house. You know. It's yeah. kind of. It's kind of. Here's the thing. Like, that's your girlfriend's or ex-girlfriend's best friend. Like, yeah. You don't instantly do that. You're like, And also your brand new ex-girlfriend's best friend. Yeah. That's a little douchey. But yeah, that's against, I'm not saying he deserved... That's against girl code. Let's start there. So, like... Not saying he deserved to die for it, but, no. like, don't do that shit. <laughs> exactly. So, um, that... After that altercation, Needy breaks into Jennifer's home, and they have, like, a tussle, like, a really big fight. Because Jennifer didn't finish feeding on Chip. Okay. She was stopped. Yeah. So she she doesn't have the full strength. So they fight, um, and Needy stabs Jennifer in the heart with a utility knife. Okay. And it kills Jennifer completely. So, like, she's actually dead this time. It destroys the demon inside of her. So she, her body dies along with the demon leaving her. Because that was presumably the only thing keeping her alive. Okay. And Jennifer's mother finds Needy over her daughter's body. Because that's just how that works. Flash forward. Needy is later seen in an insane asylum. And she now has actually manifested some of Jennifer's powers. Because she was bitten oh. non-fatally by Jennifer during their fight. Okay. So she can levitate and she has super strength. Cool. Are some of the few are some of the things that they see. So, I think the ending of the movie is really poetic and really beautiful. Like she was my best friend and I had to kill her, but I still want to do right by her uh, because I didn't really mention this, but all throughout the movie, there's gay undertones, like serious. I was just undertones. gonna ask, yeah, when does the gay shit start? Yeah, because you, you watched the trailers, you saw. You saw them make out. I'm pretty sure that was in one of the trailers. I'm pretty sure that was one of the trailers. So, like, this when was, does the gay shit start? It t- transpires during the movie, like, in parts. Like, when they're at the band, seeing the band in the bar at the very beginning, like, they hold hands. And it's, like, kind of, That's like, a like, secretive like holding hands. That's, like, gay. It's, but it's secretive. It's not like, oh, you're my best friend, I'll hold your hand. It's, like, a very, like, slow, like, nicely, like, hold hand. So gay. Gay. 
but not admitting to it. And then there's one point after what happens to Jennifer where they do make out. So gay. So there's gay. So they they have feelings for each other. Okay. It's not super explored in the movie, and it's not the main point of the movie either. Okay. The main point of the movie is... It should be the main point of the movie. But the main point of the movie is really their friendship. I would murder any guy for you. Thank you, honey. I would, too. <laughs> As, like I said, the ending is very poetic because this was her best friend. And regardless of how she may have treated her at any point in time or anything, she was probably in love with Jennifer. So Needy escapes the insane asylum and she finds the band members. Mm-hmm. They're staying in a motel, the ones that murdered Jennifer, and she kills all of them. Good. That's the end of the movie. That's fun. I like that. I like that. Ending. It's a happy yeah. ending. It's a, it's it's depressingly a happy ending. Like I said, it's a very poetic ending. Yeah. Yeah. So that that was the murder of Elise Taylor and uh Jennifer's body. Cool. Yeah. And I do Final I do want to watch it. I don't like horror movies, as I mentioned last time in the podcast, but I feel like I'm willing to explore this one. It's a very, it's not as scary as you think it is. It's like, sure, there's some really freaky moments, but it has a lot of comedy, and it's like watching, it's kind, it's not, I'm not comparing it to Zombieland, but I'm saying it has comedic elements in it, kind okay. of like Zombieland, like, there's a comedic moments in it It, it's broken up nicely so it doesn't feel like it's too you're too tense or there's too much suspense the whole time so the storytelling is well done when it comes to that yes what about the cinnamon toastography (laughs) she hates it when i say that but i say that instead of cinematography i say cinnamon toastography and the great thing is like half the time people don't notice when i say that but she always does so it's actually pretty good cinematography, I would say. It's cinnamon toastography, madam. But I, I'd say all around, to all around, like, the movie is great. The reason why it had such a bad reputation, like, if you go look at the reviews for after it first came out, like, um, I don't know if it's on Rotten Tomatoes, but other websites did reviews and critics did reviews, they're all very negative. But that's because people were just expecting girls making out. And that would be the whole movie. But that wasn't the point of the movie. Yeah. But the marketing made it seem like it was just about Megan Fox being hot. Because she is. But that's not the point of the movie. I get that. The the movie... But Megan Fox. But the thing is, the movie would have been better for a female viewership because of the themes. But mostly guys went to go see it because of Megan Fox. I would see and, it because of Megan Fox. Well, I saw I wanted to see it because of Megan Fox too, but I also thought the plot was good. <laughs> That's gay. I, I'm gay. I can say that. But I also thought the plot was good because I'm a I'm a woman. I can understand the plot better because yeah. it's it's geared toward women. The movie was... kill men and be hot. That's yes. That's all I want in life. But the movie is geared toward the themes, like the French toxic friendship, like the undertones of like loving your best friend but not knowing how to deal with it. All those things are more geared toward women. Oh, yeah. I definitely and agree with that. Men were obviously mad when they went to go see the movie because there was no Megan Fox sex or like hardcore anything in the movie. And then um, there was um, there was no like just female action in the movie, I guess you could say. Because the trailer alluded to it, alluded to it because they used that clip of them making out, but nothing else really happened after that. Okay. Yeah. So th- they really geared the movie toward guys. Like the marketing team really <laughs> fucked up. Like yeah. the the whole, everyone involved in the movie knew that the marketing team they didn't agree. I think that's if fair. If you if you watch interviews that they did later on, um, I think they did interviews for the ten year anniversary of the movie is when they talked about some of it. And all of the main cast will tell you that the marketing team did an awful job. And, like, the, the creator of the movie didn't want them to do it that way. She was angry at them for marketing well, yeah, it that way. because this is a woman's story. It really is. And they just made it seem like it was just a, a fun time for guys. And then the guys were all confused because they didn't understand the plot. Yeah. I mean, I understand the plot. But, like, but the guys just wanted just hot action. I mean, who doesn't? I know, but, and, like, and it is a Megan Fox movie, but, like, it was about more than that, and they didn't get it. Yeah. But, yeah, that, that, that would be.
be our episode. Awesome. Yeah. I enjoyed being here, as I always do. Yes. Partners in Crime is a, a very fun time, and we will obviously do it more often if everyone enjoys it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, everyone, until next time. <laughs>